In this video, I will show you how to configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as I2C pins for both Debian 7.11 and 8.6. And for this video, I'll be using the I2C temperature sensor on this board. And I'll post a link on the description below where you can buy this board. Now, let's get started and let's move over to Debian 8.6. So, first thing you want to check is which device tree overlays you have currently exported. And we do that by printing the contents of the slots file. So, cat, then the path to your slots file. And I previously created a variable called slots, which points to my slots file. But if you haven't created that variable, this is what that variable points to. So you can also do cat and put in the full path to that file. And you should get the same contents. Now currently, I don't have any device tree overlay exported. However, if you do have a device tree overlay exported, go ahead and unexport it. And if you're not sure how to export or unexport device tree overlays, Check out my previous video I made on exporting and non-exporting device tree overlays. Now the reason why you want to unexport device tree overlays is because the device tree overlays that are currently exported might be using the pins that you want to configure. And if you want to configure some pins, in this example as I2C pins, but are currently being used by another device tree overlay, you might get a message that says file exists. For example, these are the pins that I can configure as I2C pins. And here I have pin 21 and 22. Now if we scroll up to our PWM pins, you can see that a PWM device tree overlay also uses pin 21 and 22. So if you had that device tree overlay exported and then you wanted to export the I2C device tree overlay that also uses these pins, you would get that file exists message. You can also check the DTS file to see which device tree overlay uses which pins. And that file is a file that is used to build a device tree overlay. And I'll cover that in another video. But for right now, make sure that you don't have any device tree overlay exported. Now, after you unexport the device tree overlays, let's go and cd into the following directory, cd slash live slash firmware. Let's print out the contents of this directory. So here you can see all the device tree overlays that you can export and unexport. And those device tree overlays are the ones that end with DTBO. And if we scroll up, we can see that there are three I2C device tree overlays that we can use. However, the only two that we'll be using are BB-I2C2 and BB-I2C1. Also, there are two I2C pins that are enabled by default. And those two pins are pin 19 and 20. But if you wanted to use pin 17 or 18, you would have to export the BB-I2C1 device tree overlay. Now, before we export the I2C device tree overlay, let's see the to the following directory cd slash dev hit enter let's clear the screen and let's print out the contents of this directory this directory has several character files and you can tell by the c here on the left side and a character file provides a serial stream of input or output now if we scroll up we can see that there are two i square c character files and these are the software device files that you use to configure the i square c pins for example to configure a register or to read in the value stored in a in a register now like i mentioned before there's already two pins that are enabled by default and those are covered by the i square c dash two file now the i square c dash zero file is an internal bus control for HDMI. So for I2C configuration, in this example, we won't be using this file. Now the I2C temperature sensor that I showed on my board is connected to pins 17 and 18. And like I mentioned before, those are disabled by default. So to enable them, we export the BB-I2C1 device tree overlay. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Clear the screen. And we export a device tree overlay by writing to the slots file. So echo, open quotes, BB-I2C1, close double quotes, the direct output symbol followed by the path to your slots file. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the verbal that I created, hit enter. And if we print out the contents of our slots file, we can see that that I2C device tree overlay has been exported. And you can tell that it's been exported by the L here. So if the L is missing, it means that it is not exported. Now if we print out the contents of this same directory, we should see a new I2C character file created. So I'm gonna go ahead and export only the I2C file. Hit enter. And here's the new file that was created, I2C-1. And that's the file that we'll be using for this example to configure the I2C temperature sensor. So again, just to summarize, the I2C-1 file is used to configure pins 18 and 17. And the I2C-2 file is used to configure pins 19 and 20. And that's where it's different for Debian 7.11. On Debian 7.11, if we CD to the same directory, and print out the contents of this file. Well, actually, is just see which I2C files we have. We can see that the two files we have here are I2C-0 and I2C-1. And if we export the device tree overlay that we exported back on Debian 8.6, 
we should see the other new file created. And here the new file is I squared C dash two. Now the difference between Debian 7.11 and Debian 8.6 is that for Debian 7.11, if you want to configure pins 17 and 18, you actually need to write to the I squared C dash two file. And if you want to configure pins 19 and 20, you need to write to the I squared C dash one file. So it's just backwards as from Debian 8.6, but everything else should be the same. Now back on Debian 8.6. There are some I square C tools that you'll need to configure the I square C pins. And to check if you have these tools or not, go ahead and type in I square C and just hit the tab key for auto completion. And you should get this list of, of commands that you can use. So if you see these four commands, it means that you do have that tool installed. If not, this is how you install it. Use a sudo command. If you're not signed in as root, then type in the command apt get followed by the word install then i square c dash tools and hit enter this should have been tools hit enter and because i already had the tool installed nothing happened but if you didn't have the tool previously installed it should have installed and by the way you need to be connected to the internet to install this tool now let's clear the screen and if we type in the command i square c detect followed by the option l and hit enter and here we see the default i square c buzz and the i square c buzz that we enabled by exporting the device tree overlay and like I mentioned before, the I square C temperature sensor on my board is connected to pin 17 and 18, which maps to I square C dash one. So we can actually probe this bus for any connected device. And we do that by using the command I square C detect. So I square C detect, followed by the option Y and option R, and then the bus number, which in this case is one. So we hit enter. We should see the address of the device connected to the I square C dash one bus which in this case is 4D and that's the address of the I square C temperature sensor that I have on my board. So just to verify, let's go ahead and open up the spreadsheet of the I square C temperature sensor. Here's the spreadsheet of my device and if we scroll down, we should come across this slave address table. And this table says the address of multiple MCP980X devices. Now the device that I chose ends with A5. So this row right here should tell us the slave address of our device, which in this case is D and 4 so 4d which is consistent with the results that we got here on our terminal window and that's how you would check to make sure that your device is connected now if our device wasn't connected we would get several use for example let's go ahead and print out the devices that are currently connected to bus 2 i square c bus 2 so we did enter we should see only use here which means that no device is currently connected to i square c bus 2 which correspond to the pins 19 and 20 the default pins so it is right, we don't have anything connected to those pins. So you shouldn't see the slave address of any device. Also to see what other options can be used with the I square C detect command, you can type in the command man, followed by the name of the I square C detect command. So I square C detect, hit enter. And here you should get more information about the command I square C detect. So if we use the, the arrow keys to scroll up and down we should see the purpose of the option Y and the purpose of the option R that we use. And to exit out of this screen, go ahead and hit the Q for quit. Now to read in values from a register and to write values to a register, there are two commands you can use. The I square C get command and the I square C set command. First, we'll use the I square C get command to read in the values of a register from our I square C temperature sensor. So looking back at our data sheet, we can see that under the section registers, there are four registers that we can read and write to. The temperature register, the configuration register, the temperature hysteresis register, and the temperature limit set register. So to set or get the temperature register, you would write to the register 0x00, and that's in hexadecimal. For the configuration register, you would use 0x01. For the temperature hysteresis register, you would use 0x2. And for the temperature limit set register, you would use 0x3. And I know that because here it tells me that bits 7 through 3 are all zeros and P1 and P0 are determined by the values that we're given here. So let's go ahead and work with our configuration register. So if we go down to the configuration register section, here it tells us which bits to set for whatever configuration we want. So if we go back to our terminal window, we can use the I square C get command to get the current configuration of the configuration register. And to do that, we type in the command I square C get followed by the option Y, followed by the I square C buzz number, which in this case is one, since that's what our temperature sensor is connected to. And then you type in the slave address, and from our data sheet and our I square C detect command that we executed previously, 
we can see that the slave address is 4D and we type that out in hexadecimal form so 0x4d followed by the register address that we want to read from and as we saw from the data sheet the register address of the configuration register is 0x00 and if we hit enter we should get this and um, actually now that I remember the register address of the configuration register was 0x01 so let me go ahead and execute that command again so hit the up key to go to your previous command and let's replace this with 0x1 and if we hit enter now we can see the current configuration of the configuration register right now is 0x00 and if we go back to our data sheet down to the configuration register section you can see that because we got 0x00 right now our i square c temperature sensor is using all of the default parameters so one shot is set to disable the ADC resolution bit is set to 9 bit the default Q is set to 1 the alert polarity bit is set to active low the comp int bit is set to comparator mode and the shutdown bit is set to disable which makes sense since I haven't configured the I square C temperature sensor yet so let's go ahead and configure the temperature sensor and let's change the ADC resolution bit from 9 bit to 11 bit so that means that we'll be writing the value of 0x40 to the configuration register so if we go back to our terminal to write to any register we use the I square C set command so I square C set followed by the option Y followed by the I square C bus number followed by the slave address which in this case is 0x4d followed by the register address and the register address of the configuration register is 0x01 followed by the value that we want to set our configuration register to so in this case is 0x40 and if we hit enter now if we use the I square C get command to get the current value of the configuration register we should see the new value we set so hit enter and you should see 0x40 which is the value that we gave our configuration register so now our i square c temperature sensor is set to an ADC resolution of 11 bits now let's go ahead and clear the screen what we're going to do next is actually read the temperature from the i square c temperature sensor and uh, I'm uh, actually going to go ahead and change the ADC resolution from what we have right now to 12 bits so I'll be writing the value of 0x60 to the configuration register so I do that again using the I square C set command and so now our temperature sensor should be to 12 bit resolution now we go back to our data sheet down to the ambient temperature register section we can see that we're given a formula on how to calculate the ambient temperature and you can also see that when you read the ambient temperature you're given uh, two bytes and the four least significant bits are set to zero and the most significant bit is the sign and the other bits are the temperature that your sensor is reading now if we scroll down towards the bottom of the document here we can see that we're given protocols on how to read uh, from a register and here's how to read two bytes of data so basically we want to first choose which register we want to read from and then we read the values from a register now back on the ambient temperature register section here in the first sentence it says that this register is a read only register so to choose it we give it a dummy value and we do that by writing to it but because this is a read only register it shouldn't affect it so back to our terminal window so again first we select it by writing a dummy value to it so I square C set followed by the Y option the I square C bus number which is 1 followed by the slave address 4D followed by the register that we want to write to and again from the data sheet the ambient temperature register is 0x00 followed by the value that we want to write to it so again this is just a dummy value so it can be anything but I'm going to choose 0x00 hit enter so now that we chose that register we can read from it and we're going to read using the I square C get command so I square C get followed by the Y option the bus number the slave address the register we want to read from so 0x00 and if we go back to the ambient temperature section here we can see that we need to read in uh, two bytes so we need to read in a word and we do that by giving the option of W so we type W at the end hit enter and that's the current temperature that the sensor is reading now we need to convert it back to a readable value and to do that we look back at our data sheet and our data sheet had an equation that tells us how to get the ambient temperature in a readable form so that's the code times 2 to the power of n and code is the output we got transformed into, into a decimal form so 0x e 0 1c transform into decimal times 2 to the power of n 
and n it can be either negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, or negative 4, depending on the bit resolution that you chose. I chose a 12 bit resolution, so I will use negative 4 for my n value. Also, if we look at the table below, if you remember, uh, the four least significant bits were actually zero. So we need to do some shifting as well. Also note that Linux is a big Indian machine, meaning that the most significant bytes are stored first. So in this case, 1C is our most significant byte, and 1 in uh, E0 is our least significant byte. So looking back at the data sheet again, this upper half should be 1C, and this lower half should be E0. And E0 is a byte that we shifting to the left, or to the right four times. So if we open up our calculator and put in the value that we got, so 1C, E0, we shift to our right four times, so the zero is gone, and now we're left with 1CE, and our decimal value is 462, so that's what the code will be. And now we've got to multiply that times 2 to the power of negative 4, so 462 times 2 to the power of uh, negative 4. Hit enter, and that's our ambient temperature in Celsius, so 28.875 degrees Celsius, or 83.975 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's how you will read the temperature from this I2C sensor. Now if you wanted to continuously read the ambient temperature, you could use the watch command. So if we type in watch dash dash help, here we see an option called uh, N or interval. So if you pass in the option N followed by the number of seconds, what this command will do is it will execute a, a command that you give it every N number of seconds. So let's go ahead and monitor this uh, the ambient temperature on the sensor by continuously printing this command. So if we do watch dash n and let's monitor every one second, then we do i square c get dash y one zero x four d zero x zero zero to read the ambient temperature. Hit enter, and I should have actually been zero x four d. Hit enter, and that's the temperature that the sensor is reading and is being updated every one second. So if I put my finger over the i square c sensor to heat it up you should see the value go up and if i remove it it should go, it should go back down to what it was initially now to exit out of this screen go ahead and hit control c and you should be back to your previous screen now on my next video i will show you how to configure the pins on your beaglebone black as i square c pins to control this i square c temperature sensor but in C++. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.